we're going to give you one more example now of a um, convolutional code. And this code will take you through the encoding and the decoding process again, try and take you through all the steps. Give you one more example. We'll change it up a little bit. We'll make the coding rate 1 over 3, as opposed to the previous example, which is always 1 over 2. But we'll keep the same constraint length 3 because we don't want to have our states get too big. It just gets a little hard to manage. So we're looking at this example. And as I said, we're going to have k, the constraint length, equal to 3. I'm only showing you the two registers, which represent the state. But of course, there's also here uh, the input buffer which would be the uh, third shift register for when I put in my data. But here, we'll just show the uh, two uh, state registers. Now, there's three outputs because I have a rate 1 over 3. And in the first case, we have here the vectors that represent the um, interconnections for the uh, registers to generate the codes. I notice also here the list of uh, the hexadecimal representation for this binary uh, number, which is another way you can sometimes see uh, codes listed in a table of codes. Uh, they might give you the vector, or they might just get you the hex um, um, representation. Now, the first one here, G1, is just simply uh, this interconnection, which means that it's just taking the input vector, just looking at the input vector, not combining anything with it which means this is a systemic code. I can read the data bit directly inside of the uh, code. So as the code words come out, I'll know that the first bit just represents what was the input to the encoder. Now, the other two uh, data bits, of course, are um, derived from these uh, three registers. And in case of the second bit, you're adding the input buffer with the first register from the uh, state. And in the third one, we here we see the summation, and there's from all three. So all three of the registers are going to be added to generate the third uh, bit of the code word. OK, so now let's go on to the encoding operation. And once again, I'm going to define uh, four states. Uh, I think I changed the order of the states a little bit. The first state, A, is always the all-zero state. And then I think this used to be what we called C. This used to be what we called B. But it's really completely arbitrary. So now B is the 0, 1. Um, C is 1, 0. And the last state, of course, is 1, 1 in these registers. So we've defined our states. Now we're going to build our trellis. And to build our trellis, we look at our encoder. And we say for a given state, like if I start at 0, 0, if I input is 0, well then, of course, uh, the summation of all of these is going to give 0. So I'm going to get the 0 code word again. Suppose I'm at state 0 and I put in instead a 1. What's going to be my output then? So I'm saying I'm at state 0. So I have a 0 here and a 0 here. And then I input a 1. And so the first output, of course, is going to be the 1 because it's a systemic code. So the first one is 1. And if we look at the next one, it's a combination of uh, 1 and 0. And that gives me a 1. And then the last one is, of course, a, a combination of all three. 0, 0, 1 gives me another 1, and I get the 1, 1, 1. We could uh, take uh, any other um, entry in the table, see if we could uh, maybe run that one more time, see how uh, you would fill up a trellis based just on the implementation. So for instance, say I started at 1, 0, and I look at the 0 transition. So here I am at the 1 and 0 state. So I'm at the 1, 0 state. I enter in a 0. So I have a 0 at the input. And I calculate what is the output for, first of all, uh, systemic. So whenever there's a 0, the first one is 0. You know, all the red ones, the first ones start with, with a 0. All the blue ones, they all start with a 1, because it's systemic code. Now, I look at what is the second one. And so for the second one, I see I'm combining 0 and 1. That gives me a 1 here. And for the last one, of course, I'm combining all three. And when I can combine all three, I get a 1 again. So now you know when you're given the uh, state, uh, the shift register implementation, how you can generate the trellis for the encoders. And uh, of course, it's also used in the decoder. 
So we have our basic trellis for the encoder. And if we build a complete trellis, we would just repeat this over and over. So here we have the repeated trellis. And of course, we have our states. OK, the constraint length is 3, which means we have 4. And then all the transitions are defined. And uh, we have our uh, code uh, words at the output. So if I wanted to uh, notice that n equal 3, that's because when I look at what are the code words, I have three bits in the code words. So that's directly from n equal 3. Now let's uh, take the encoder and use it uh, to find the minimal distance. So we want to know how good is this code. So this could, um, uh, how are we going to find the minimal distance? Well, I'll uh, try all the paths between something that starts at A and ends at A. And here I've taken the path where I start at A, I go down to C, then I go back up to B, and then from B I go up to A. And I calculate the weight of this code, or the distance between this code and zero, which is also known as the weight of the code. And that way I just add up the number of ones. There's three here, two here, one there, that makes six. So the distance between uh, this code and the all zero code is, of course, the number of ones, because this is always zero. So the number of bits that are different are just the number of ones. Uh, and we call that the weight of the code. And for this path, it comes up to be 6. And uh, I, I won't go through all the others, but you can try it yourself, and you'll find that, indeed, the minimal distance is 6. Or we also call that the free distance uh, for a convolutional code. Let's look at an example of how we actually do the encoding. Um, we'll start with the data input of 0. And I'm starting again, always starting at state A. If I input a, a data 0, I'm going to stay at state A, which means the code word that comes out is a 0. Now let's suppose that the next bit that I input is a 1. So the next bit is a 1, which means that I'm going to go uh, from state A down to uh, state C. And the output from my encoder, I know that that will be uh, three ones. And as if I go up, now have an input of a data of 0. Now I'm going to go from state C to state B. And the code word at the output is going to be 0, 1, 1. And finally, if I input another 0, uh, I go up to uh, state A again. So this would be the path that represents these four uh, data bits, 0, 1, 0, 0. 0, the red solid, 1, the blue dashed, 0, the red solid, red solid. So that path represents the uh, uh, path through the encoder. And of course, if I read the um, uh, s states uh, that were included, or I could look at the, um, the code. So here, we see the code that's transmitted. We have the three zeros, three zeros. 3 ones, 3 ones, 0 1. So here I have the output of the encoder in terms of the code that's transmitted. And if I wanted to look at the states, how the states were changing, I was at A, then at A, then down to C, up to B, back to A. So we have a representation of the output of the encoder, the input of the encoder, and the states of the encoder during this process. So this is one example for encoding. Uh, let's look at another example. Uh, this example is uh, a, another path. And in this path, we're going uh, for uh, initial state is A. Those are the first two zeros. This means we're stating, starting here at A. And now I have a bit sequence that's 1, 1, 0, 1. So I have 1, 1, 0, 1. And in this case, I would write my code. I would read the code here off of the path. The codes along the path, it would be uh, three ones. That's the first leg of the path. One, zero, zero, second leg of the path, etc. So I would know the output in terms of the coded output of the encoder. And if I asked what was the weight of this path, that would be the number of ones in the path. And if I look here, I would count uh, seven ones in this uh, path. So if I were to ask the question, what is the distance between this path 
and the all zero path, well that would be just be the weights, but of course this one doesn't actually go back to uh, the um, state A yet. But just for in terms of definitions to help you in answering questions on the exams, uh, different kinds of questions that could be asked, uh, this would be an example given the path, what's the weight, what's the distance to the all zero states, etc. So that's the encoder, how to build an encoder, how to start from the uh, shift register implementation, or you could have started from the vector representation or in hexadecimal representation, built your own uh, register, and gone through the encoding. Different kinds of questions I could ask about the uh, encoding process.